Rereading The Miracle of Mana made me smile. Just over a generation ago, my late husband, Timber, was building a new business based on an invention I'd asked for, a compact car seat that converted into a stroller. It was a tough time for us financially, and one of our friends observed that Timber and I seemed to face it all with a mana mentality. Every day brought just enough food and joy and fulfillment to cover our bases. We didn't ask or need more at that point. This mana approach to life, when the going gets rough, can be liberating. It involves letting go of superfluous wants and finding peace, purpose, and even pleasure in the guidance God gives us. When we follow God's directions for our lives, we will find steadfast support for our basic needs by a gracious heavenly host. Obedience to the Lord is no guarantee of a smooth, straight shot at peace and plenty. But if we endure life's vicissitudes with obedience, determination, and a spirit of gratitude, we will see the miracle of mana replicated in our lives. We will receive enough of all we need to continue our journey. And it will not only be sufficient, but sweet to our taste. As chapter 16 of Exodus begins, we join droves of children of Israel and others who have followed Moses and Aaron into the wilderness to escape slavery and oppression in Egypt. With some bumps and detours, they have done their part, following the Lord's appointed leader and accepting his plan. One is inclined to think that life should be rosy, but it isn't. It's hard. After just a month and a half in the desert, the children of Israel are underfed and overtired. In fact, the scriptures say that they longed for Egypt, the land of their enslavement, rather than the life they were embarking upon following the prophet. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Moses confers with the Lord and announces they will be fed with both meat and bread. And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Moses' answers from God model a connection with the eternal we can each strive to establish. Consistent prayer, careful, comprehensive listening to answers, which often means not only attentiveness to the Spirit, but also taking time to seek guidance through studying the Scriptures, and faithful follow-through on received guidance will build this kind of calm clarity. It did for Moses, it can for each of us. After the grueling weeks of plagues and promises fulfilled, often miraculously, Moses' faith is firm. His faith is moving to the realm of knowledge. He walks, talks, and receives reliable responses from the Lord. What he does need is patience as he deals with the faithless, fickle crowd traveling with him. He needs it, and the Lord will require it of him. The rock-solid relationship Moses' obedience and faith has enabled him to forge with the Lord is not an excuse for self-righteous rage or impatience with those less in tune with the Spirit. This character-building challenge is one Moses will face repeatedly. The lessons in Exodus are clear. Leaders, no matter how brilliant, faithful, and selfless, are required to be patient, humble, and long-suffering. Life was for Moses and is for each of us an opportunity to work on shortcomings and to strive to develop Christ-like qualities, no matter what our calling or profession. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and armor for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents." The rules for gathering, use, and the very limited preservation of manna on the Sabbath are among the first of many instructions the Lord gives Israel. 
specific instructions, and lots of them are a defining aspect of the interactions between Israel and Jehovah as they rebuild their covenantal relationship. These laws are praised in Psalms and elsewhere. The faithful are grateful for the confidence they have as they are obedient that they are truly walking carefully in his way and will not stray. For us and for the Israelites, obeying these rules prepares us to live lives that conform to God's will. And we can be confident that God wills our happiness and growth at every opportunity. And speaking of pleasure, coriander and honey, that sounds like it was pretty tasty.